Whether you already own a 3D printer or you're looking at getting a 3D printer, it's really important to know how to maintain them and how often they will need maintenance. Because with just a little bit of preventative maintenance, almost any 3D printer will print for thousands of hours and years to come. What's up everybody, JJ here, and 3D printer maintenance is one of those really common questions I always get asked. And the problem is there's so many correct different ways of doing it. That's why it can be so confusing, especially for beginners. So I wanted to make a comprehensive video covering how to maintain a 3D printer, all the different systems, and how often you need to check on those systems. I'll put chapter markings down below so you can come back in the future to check up on different systems as you need maintenance. And you can also send other people to this video because that's what I'm going to be doing. If people ask questions about the hot end, for example, I'm going to refer them to the hot end section of this video. So. Let's get right into it. So here are some general chapters we're going to be covering. Each one is a different system on the printer, and in each chapter I'm going to mention how often you need to look over them. Some need some fairly common maintenance, and some are super rare, maybe once a year type things. First off is dusting and cleaning, and I, you have to ask yourself the question, when was the last time you dusted or cleaned your 3D printer? I know it's really common, a lot of people need to leave their printers in garages or just Dusty environments, and printers create dust, all these little bits of filament that fall off, but motion systems don't enjoy dust. You got a bunch of moving metal parts, and if you get extra dust or sand or grit in there, that's going to slow things down, that's going to wear out parts. So the first step is to dust things. Using a paper towel or a microfiber, just simply wipe things down. Move the bed out of the way, clean underneath the bed. If things are really gunked on, you can use just some general purpose cleaner or some rubbing alcohol. I use IPA for a lot of things on the printer, so we're going to be using that. So just a simple dusting like this, and make sure you get everything, everything that might drop dust onto a motion system. So up here is really important, everywhere in and around. Q-tips can also be a great tool to getting into some of the smaller crevices where it's kind of more difficult to get with an entire rag. This is a very cheap maintenance thing. You only need a rag or a towel. You could use your finger if you don't have a towel around, but it should be done fairly often. I would say do it as often as you notice dust, but if you're not the type of person to notice dust, just do it weekly. If you're printing fairly often, weekly should be good enough. Just a simple wipe down will help prolong a lot of your 3D printer's life. Now on your motion system, here we've got linear rods here that this slides along. You could use a dry towel to clean up any dust that usually collects at the ends of the rods. If you're about to lubricate it, which is the next step we're going to get to, then you can use some isopropyl alcohol to clear off any lubrication that's already on the rods, and that will get it ready for the next step. Don't clean it with alcohol unless you're going to lubricate it next. And that leads us to the next chapter, lubrication. There's two camps of thought here, oil versus grease, and I think they're both different and maybe useful for different people. Oil is thinner, it's easier to apply, it doesn't attract as much dust and dirt, but needs to be reapplied more often. Grease is thicker, a little bit more messy to apply, it does attract a lot of dust and dirt, and it won't need to be reapplied as often. So that's a benefit on that side. So I think you really need to look at where you're putting your 3D printer. If you're putting it in a really dusty environment, if it's in the garage where there's just dust around it all the time, Oil might be better off because it won't attract as much dust to sticking to your motion systems. You will have to reapply it more often, but I think it can save some of your motion systems if they're not getting gummed up with dirt and dust. For people who want to apply it once and it'll last a lot longer, grease I think is better in that case. And I actually use both on this printer. The grease I use is called Super Lube, but when it takes off the cape, he just goes by Clark Kent. It's a multi-purpose synthetic grease with PTFE, it's just a good all-around grease you can use for a bunch of different systems. The oil that I use is a 3-in-1 with PTFE. It says 3-in-1, but I've only found two of those uses. I use it on a 3D printer and for a bike chain. If anyone else finds that mythical third use for it, let me know in the comments down below. But honestly, if you have a favorite grease or oil that you're already using on other machinery or other, if you have a bike chain grease you're already using, you could probably use it for this. The motion systems of 3D printers are not as demanding as a CNC machine or other heavy machinery. So if you're using a different lubrication on your printer, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, there's gonna be that one person who lets me know I'm doing everything totally incorrect. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So now we can move on to the printed bed. It's a very different system. You do not want lubrication here. And your greasy, oily fingers will mess it up. So you want to keep it as clean as possible. I've got all three options here. We've got a G10, what I call the ultimate build surface. We've got a glass plate, 
and we've got a dual-sided PEI spring steel plate. All of them are a little bit different, but fairly simple when it comes down to it. With the coated glass plate and the G10 build surface, I wipe them down with some isopropyl alcohol. I would recommend using 91% isopropyl alcohol. This one's only 70 and it's kind of a backup since I ran out of 91 and I found this in a medicine cabinet upstairs. But you can simply get some on a rag and rub down your build surface. With rubbing it down with alcohol, I would do it every few prints or when you notice prints not sticking well. But eventually that IPA method will stop working. Maybe a month or a couple months between, I will take the build plate off. Hopefully your bed can remove. On this one, the stock build plate does not come off. It's glued down and it's a huge pain to remove. For those people, you can kind of skip this step. I would take this print bed off, take it to a sink, run it under some soap and water, and really scrub it off. And then you can come back and then scrape it down. This is a thousand grit sandpaper. It just adds a little bit of scuff back to it because this coating on the glass bed can need a little bit more friction to it. So you can use some fine steel wool, the backside of a sponge, or this is just some thousand grit sandpaper. And then on these build surfaces, I would use a little bit of IPA to wipe it down. Just pour it on, rub it down, and this build surface is ready to go again. And that can really prolong your build surface. I have heard on these PEI coated spring steel plates that just rubbing down with IPA doesn't always work. And I seem to notice that, that after a while, the IPA sort of stops working as well. And there's various different ways to clean it. I have found just wiping it down with a dry rag, doing a little bit of the thousand grit sandpaper, rubbing it down with another dry rag to get any of that dust off of there, not adding more liquid on there, just dry rubbing it, and then you should be ready to go. I'm not as experienced on PEI coated sheets as I am with these other two build surfaces. So if you have a better method for cleaning PEI sheets, let us know in the comments down below. And then after a couple years of maintenance, you may eventually need to replace your build plate. Most of them are really quite durable and won't need to be replaced. A real situation where you might need to replace the plate would be, well, if you just want to try out a different build surface, or if you've dug the nozzle in and created quite a gash there. I've put some minor scratches on this build surface, but I don't notice them showing up on the prints, so it's fine for now. But if you did have any big gashes that were showing on your prints and that was bothering you, then yeah, you could replace it. You can get one of these G10s for maybe $10. So fairly inexpensive replacements after years of service. And next we're moving on to the belts. So almost all 3D printer motion systems are guided by these belts and they should make a tone when you pluck them. It will make a different tone whether it's I was all the way over here. This is a longer length and it's gonna make a lower note. Over here, it's gonna make a higher note. But in general, it should make a little bit of a plucking noise. But if they're not making any note, they might be just a little loose and you need to tighten your belts. Each belting system has a different way of tightening them, but just look up what your printer needs for each axis. If you are getting any fraying threads coming off the sides of your belts, you can use some scissors to just snip that off and then make sure the belts are aligned on their guides. They shouldn't be fraying at all. Cheaper belts may wear out, but that's more a problem of the printers eating them up and they shouldn't be wearing out that fast. If you do have a misaligned belt that gets torn up and needs a replacement, they are fairly cheap to get some really high quality ones. So now we can move on to the motion systems of our 3D printers. So there's three options when it comes to 3D printer motion systems. The first one and cheapest will be wheels on V-slot extrusions. The second will be these linear rods and bearings that slide along it. And the third one is linear bearings. And there are various benefits to each one, cost being one of the biggest benefits to the first two options. When it comes to maintaining them V-slot wheels, simply wipe them down with a rag and make sure there's no dust and debris that falls into the V-slot they're rolling against. If one of your wheels does get a flat spot in it, and you'll notice it when it's sliding along the rail, it will skip in a certain part every single time. You can replace the rubberized outer part of the wheel. Those are fairly inexpensive and easy to replace. They shouldn't be wearing out in one spot. It might mean things are rubbing and maybe your wheels are too tight holding onto the extrusion. So you can loosen the nut to loosen that grip. They should roll along fairly easily. A benefit of those V-slot wheels is they don't need lubrication. Unlike these, these are the linear rods used on the Anycubic Mega S, also on most of the Prusa printers, 
they use these linear rods with linear bearings. The bearings won't need to be repacked with grease. They'll probably last the life of the printer, but there are machinist YouTube channels that would better explain how to do that process. For us, we're just gonna be lubing up these rails that they slide along. For me, I'm gonna be using oil on these. I like using oil on the X and Y axis here because they're long and flat. That way dust is gonna try to land on them and it makes a mess. And also they're so easy to get to, I prefer using something I can easily apply like this. So I just put a paper towel underneath the rod and put a couple drips along it. Go down and do the bottom one. Really trying not to get any of this grease on the belt in the middle. You can wipe down the belt just to make sure nothing's stuck to it. And then roll your bearing over it a couple times. And you can really feel it starts to slide a lot better. And then I'll do it on the other side just a little bit to make sure it got all the way down to this side. And then once you've done that, usually the excess collects at the end of that travel range. So then I'll wipe off the little bit of excess at the end. You can also pick up some dirt along the way. That's a good thing. You'd rather be on the towel than left on the rails. I usually replace oil every couple of weeks, maybe twice a month. I'll go through and just drip it on there run it back and forth a couple times. Or whenever you notice things not sliding super smoothly, that means it needs a little bit more. When it comes to long-term maintenance, if you keep these bearings nice and lubricated, these rods shouldn't wear out. If they do start to get a flat part on there, it could mean either they weren't lubricated well enough or if they're not running nice and parallel to each other. Then you might need to replace them. Luckily, they're really not that expensive to replace a single rod, but that's all these linear rods need for maintenance. Linear rails, on the other hand, I would use grease for that. That just seems to be what the manufacturers recommend, and so I stick with that. Those are a bit more expensive, but do have some benefits, and they really shouldn't be wearing out at all. If you keep them greased, they will outlive your printer. Now, the next axis is similar on most printers and really needs to be looked at. The Z-axis. Now, almost every printer out there uses a lead screw for the motion of there. It needs to be guided, and this one uses a linear rail back there. And the short-term maintenance for your Z-axis, I use grease for this. Grease will last a lot longer, and I use grease for the vertical axes because dust is less likely to fall onto a vertical pole than it is a horizontal one. To lube them up, just simply put a few dots along the way. That's a bit much. It can help to spread it out before you get started. Just use a paper towel, rub it up and down along the entire length of the rod, and then run your printer all the way up and down a few times to really distribute that grease. And then there will probably be extras that collect at the top and the bottom. Make sure to wipe those off as well. You don't want any piles of grease anywhere on your printer. That's gonna be a dirt magnet. The next part of your lead screw that will wear out eventually is your lead screw nut. And I recently replaced the brass ones that came stock with a new anti-backlash one made of palm plastic. So there's a bunch of debate out there of whether anti-backlash is worth it, and I don't think it's really necessary. I think 3D printers work great with the cheap ones, but on Amazon it was the same price to get the anti-backlash one, so I thought I'd go ahead and go for it. On this printer specifically, they won't work to be mounted down inside these little boxes, so I had to mount them up vertically like this. Another downside of these being palm, this part wasn't threaded for screws. So I had to use nuts on there. So I put the screws and the nuts and then had to put the spring on there because the, sp the nuts were getting in the way of the spring. It was a whole mess. Here is a close up of how this one works. And that's how I got it working on here. It seems to be working really well right now and it holds on a lot better. On the old one, I could put a little bit of force would make the Z axis move up and down. And here I can get it to happen, but it takes a good bit more force. So that could help with your Z axis if you're having issues with it. But in general, these nuts will wear out and eventually need to be replaced. You can tell when they're really wearing out, it will make a lot of noise like this, or you'll have a good amount of wobble in there. These new palm ones are way less wobble than the brass ones because they're machined to be way closer. I was gonna make a video covering replacing these, but Anycubic has an official video that works really well. And so I would refer you to that video, but if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments down below because I did replace these. But these brass ones, if everything is aligned correctly, they should last several years. The palm ones, I've heard six months to a year, but I haven't been able to fully test that out myself. I'll put a pinned comment down below if they do start to wear out. Now we can move on to maintaining your electronics. The most important thing to check when it comes to your electrical system, and I would do this maybe once a month, 
is make sure all of your motion wires are moving correctly and nothing's getting worn out. On this printer, I have these cable chains, but I still double check them to make sure nothing's getting pinched or crimped or rubbed wrong. Because if you rub through one of these wires, especially these bed wires, if you don't have any sort of strain relief on them, it was just rubbing on this open hole. That's a fire hazard right there. So most importantly, once a month at least, make sure your wires are running correctly. Even though I have these cable chains on here, they're just 3D printed ones. They're not the best cable chains out there. So I still double check all the wiring. And that's all of your motion wires. I would follow all the way up to the X carriage up here, all of these motor wires, everything that goes into the chassis. And then in your uncommon maintenance, maybe once a year, I would open up the bottom chassis of your 3D printer, make sure all the screw terminals are going down tightly, make sure nothing's melting. If connectors aren't seated properly, they could start producing a lot of heat and start melting. That's a huge fire safety risk. So just something to double check maybe once a year. Give the wires a little tug to make sure nothing's gonna just fall out all of a sudden. Fairly basic stuff and really doesn't need to be checked all that often. Have you looked at your printer's nozzle recently? I mean, really looked at it. Especially if you've got one of these silicone socks on here, you might need to double check. Just pop it off and see what your heater block looks like. It's very easy, especially if you get some failed prints, to get a bunch of plastic and gunk stuck to here. It's really easy to clean off with the right tool. Just get a brass wire brush. It doesn't even need to be very clean. This one's a huge mess. But get your nozzle up to temperature and then just scrub off the heater block and the nozzle and that'll clear away any excess plastic that gets gunked up there. I think these silicone socks are great, but you do need to take them off every now and then just to clean up your printer. The next thing to think about since you're cleaning off the heater block is how long you've had that nozzle on there. If you're using cheap brass ones off of Amazon and it's been six months to a year, it might be time to change it out, especially if you've noticed a decrease in quality of your prints. I do enjoy using cheap brass nozzles because they're so cheap and easy to replace, but they do wear out and they do need to be replaced eventually. And you might be amazed at what issues you thought were caused by other parts of your system, but really were just a bad nozzle. Other than cleaning up your heater block and nozzle, in general, check the wires of your hot end. You can check your screws to make sure everything is nice and tight and secure on here since there is a lot of motion and vibration on this part of your printer. Making sure nothing is loose can help a lot in your quality of your prints. The hot end, apart from keeping your nozzle clean and tight, the whole hot end assembly is fairly easy maintenance. Now in the general miscellaneous things to double check, one is to tighten up your screws, especially a new printer about a month after use. There's a lot of vibrations in a 3D printer. It's moving back and forth very quickly and so a lot of these screws that are tightened from the factory can get a little bit loose. So about a month after use, just go around and double check tightness on everything. Make sure everything is nice and snug, not over tight. You don't wanna strip out any of these machine screws anywhere on the printer, that can be a huge hassle. Just hand tight, just hand snug is fine for most of these. Make sure nothing is loose and about to fall out. That's a more miscellaneous once on a new printer type maintenance. And one last thing to double check is your Bowden tube. Make sure when you tug on it, there isn't, just give it a little tug and make sure it doesn't slip out and move up and down. If it does, that will definitely show up in your prints and you can simply pop the Bowden tube out, cut it a little bit shorter, or maybe this is a good time to replace it. Upgrading from the cheap stock one to a high quality Capricorn one, that's an upgrade I would call the best bang for your buck. They're fairly cheap and really does improve the quality of your prints. And I found it greatly improves extrusions and retraction distances can be shorter since it's just made to higher tolerances. Now that I've used a good one on a Bowden tube, I'm never using a cheap one again. So that about covers the maintenance schedule for your 3D printer. Some things should be done fairly often and some things are a once every year or a couple of years things will wear out. Luckily, most of the replacement parts that will wear out are fairly inexpensive and the more expensive parts of a 3D printer are really not gonna wear out in the lifespan of a 3D printer. I've had thousands of hours of runtime on this 3D printer and since I've kept it clean and lubricated, it still runs really well. But let me know in the comments down below what steps I might have skipped or if you want any more clarifications of something I skimmed over and you want a little bit more details. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out, helps this channel keep growing and helps other people see that this video was worth watching. Well, now that your printer is nice and clean, go out there, create something amazing today and I'll see you in the next one.